Pressure mounts for charges to be filed in the subway chokehold death. As tonight, an attorney for the Marine veteran shares his side. Good evening. I'm Christine Johnson. And I'm Dick Brennan. In for Maurice Dubois, we're also hearing from the family of Jordan Neely, the man killed on the subway. Sources tell us the case could go to a grand jury next week. CBS 2's Ali Bauman live outside the subway station in Soho tonight. Ali? Christine and Dick, we know the NYPD and district attorney are investigating Jordan Neely's death, which has officially been deemed a homicide. Sources tell CBS2 the case will go before a grand jury next week to determine if criminal charges will be brought against the Marine veteran. Tonight, I spoke with Neely's foster brother, who believes his troubled past does not justify his death. Most New Yorkers now know Jordan Neely as the man who was choked to death on the subway earlier this week. Some may have recognized him as the Michael Jackson impersonator on the platforms, but to his foster brother, who goes by Queens, Neely was much more. Jordan was incredible. Jordan used the money that he made on the subway trains to pay for our haircuts, to pay for our laundry, to pay for our food, because our foster care parents were not giving us those resources. He joined hundreds of protesters Friday in Washington Square Park, calling for the arrest of the 24-year-old Marine veteran, identified by his attorney as Daniel Penny, who was seen on video choking Neely for nearly three minutes. Justice for Hours after Neely died, Penny was questioned by police and released without charges. In a statement Friday, Penny's attorney said, when Mr. Neely began aggressively threatening Daniel Penny and the other passengers, Daniel, with the help of others, acted to protect themselves until help arrived. Daniel never intended to harm Mr. Neely and could not have foreseen his untimely death. The attorney now representing Neely's family spoke to TMZ Live. Someone may use the word unhinged. Well, who's really unhinged when you look at the, at the end of this this incident, it's the man who killed him. That's who's unhinged. That's who everyone should have been afraid of. Police sources tell us Neely was homeless with a history of mental illness and dozens of prior arrests. We could have mental health services. We could hire thousands of social workers here in this, this city to be able to actually help people. Protester Rachel Hu says her brother was attacked by a mentally unstable person in the transit system six months ago. When my brother was attacked, I didn't say to myself, oh, you know, uh, how do I murder this man? I said, why is this happening? Why do we have to live this way? We've also learned that the prosecutor handling the probe into Neely's case was also one of the lead attorneys in the DA's case against the Trump Organization last year. We're live in Soho. Ali Bauman, CBS2 News. Okay, Ali, thank you.